Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Crafty Owl and today I'm going to show you how to create a cute little note card set using the latest box of the month from Not Too Shabby. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. We're so glad that you're here again. Last year on my YouTube channel, I shared how I made this holder with note cards and matching envelopes. I thought the newest box of the month from Not Too Shabby, Strawberry Happiness, would make another cute set to go in one of those holders. So today, I'm going to be using some goodies from the latest box of the month to create that with. Now, the newest box is sold out, so if you didn't already get your hands on it, make sure to get subscribed for May's box of the month. I know you're going to love it. I do have a link in the description box below. You can sign up for just one month, or you can subscribe for, I think, at least three and save a little bit on each of your month's kits. Another thing, if you don't have these specific items, you might have a pass box of the month or just other goodies in your stash, you can use this same idea and just use what you have. The main supplies I'll be using from the box are pieces of paper from the Pink Berry Blast paper pad, some of the ephemera, and the Tea with Mom stamp set. Now, as I get into the process and start the voiceover, I will make sure to let you know about any other products or tools I add, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I chose four different pattern papers from the pad that I will end up using here in just a little bit with my envelope punch board to make four envelopes. Now these pieces will get cut down until they are five and a quarter inch square. Just so you know, when you're making these envelopes for the case, you'll have that five and a quarter inch square and your first punch will be at three inches. Once I have each piece cut down to the size it needs, I brought in my envelope punch board to make the envelopes. Like I mentioned, you're going to make your first punch at 3 inches. So you'll line up the left side of your paper with the 3 inch mark on the ruler and then you're going to punch it. Then bring in that bone folder and you'll make your score line where it is marked on the punch board. I do usually go over mine two or three times gently depending on how thick my paper is. Then you rotate, line your score line up with the little arrow, punch, and score again. Then you just keep up that process until all four sides of this piece of paper have the punches and the score lines. And now you're ready to use the other side of the punch at top to round each corner on your envelope. This just gives it a nice finished look. I then folded in each of my creases, made sure those were nice and crisp, and then I brought in my ATG, added just a little bit of adhesive to the outside flaps, and adhered my envelope together. I especially like how because this is double-sided paper, the inside has a different pattern than the outside. Off camera, I turned those three remaining pattern papers into envelopes. One thing to keep in mind before you hear down your flaps is kind of pay attention to if your pattern paper has a direction. Now we're going to work on the cards that go in those envelopes. I brought in one piece of heavyweight white cardstock for the bases and I cut this into four pieces that were two and a half inches wide by seven inches tall. That way when they get folded the final size is two and a half by three and a half. And I like that I can get all four of my card bases from just this single piece of cardstock. 
I did want a little more decoration on the front of the card besides the ephemera, so I brought in a couple pieces from the pattern paper pack that I will cut to two and a half by three and a half so it fills each of the card fronts. Now there are a couple strips left over and later we will use some of this to decorate the box. Next, I brought in some scraps of white cardstock and I cut these down until I got four pieces that were two and a quarter by three and a quarter. Later on, our ephemera will be adhered to these. Off camera, I added a score line to my card base pieces, but before I fold them, I want to go ahead and stamp my sentiment on the inside. I will be using the So Berry and Sweet from the stamp set, as well as one of the little strawberry icons. I did use my Misty to set up my sentiment, and I have to say this was a great plan because it did take me a little bit to get each of the words and the little strawberry icon where I wanted it. So I was able to just set it up once and stamp it on each of my card pieces. Now I did have a little help there with my pencil bone folder and I did some straightening on the door of my Misty. But once that was there, I decided that I probably wanna see how it's going to stamp. So I brought in the piece of clear cardstock that I always keep underneath my mouse pad and I did a little test stamp and it ended up looking pretty good so I went ahead and inked up my sentiment and stamped it on the inside of the card. Now because these are new stamps I did ink it up and stamp it twice just to get a nice crisp image. As I use the stamps more I will only need to ink it up and stamp it once. Now all of the pieces are ready so I can start assembling the cards. Off camera I did add a little texture to the smaller white pieces with an embossing folder and I'm going to start by adhering the piece of pattern paper flat down onto the front of each of the card bases. You will want to make sure before you go to place that down that the sentiment is reading correctly on the inside. Ask me how I know. Then once that pattern paper piece was in place, I added adhesive to the back of the emboss piece and then I continued to do the same thing until all four of the card fronts were completed. Off camera, I paired up each of the card bases with some ephemera. Some cards got one piece, some cards got two. And now I'm going to adhere these down. You could definitely use foam tape for these and give it a little extra dimension, but because I want to make sure that these will end up fitting in the envelopes, I did just adhere it all down with my ATG. Next, I paired up each of the cards with an envelope that I thought coordinated well. I did make sure each one fit inside, and then it was time to decorate the box. Like I mentioned before, I got my box at the Dollar Tree, but you can also find them at places like Office Depot. I removed the label off one off screen, and then you'll see here, once I put my four cards and envelopes in the box, there still is a little room left over if you wanted to make a couple more cards. But for now, we're going to stick with four, and we're going to use one of those scraps to decorate the front and the top. Now you could use either side of the pattern paper, that is up to you. First what I did, I cut this into two pieces that were two and three quarters inches wide. The second piece, I rotated it and cut it into two pieces that were one and a quarter inches. And then that third piece, I cut to two and one eighth inches tall. Now you'll see here when I take them up to the box later, the piece that I have for the top is a little too big. So I ended up cutting that down to about one inch tall. To adhere my pattern paper to my box, I am just using my ATG. I did make sure to put a little extra adhesive on the back and I took the cards out of the inside so I could press from the front to the back to make sure I get a good seal. Now if you normally use liquid glue but you have something like red line tape, you could always use that as well. You just want something that's going to hold up for a little bit. 
I still had quite a few scraps left over from this project, so I decided to decorate my crayon box just a little bit more. I brought in one of the small scraps I had left, and I punched a scallop border into one side. This piece then got adhesive added to the back, and I adhered it to the bottom front of my crayon box. For a little bit more color and to pull in some of the ephemera from the inside, I also used this cute little jam ephemera and adhered it to the front bottom of my box. And here's a look at the finished project. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made these mini note cards with a decorated carrying case in today's video. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next one, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.